method. Learning outcome of this topic. We will learn how to kill while using driller method. How to apply while killing principle. What happens to BHP during driller method? Driller method is of two cycles. Well data, KRP taken, at the time of drilling at 30 SPM, is 300 PSI. Hydrostatic pressure due to mud in drill string, acting downwards, is 5200 PSI. Formation pressure acting upwards, is 5700 PSI. How much pressure drill pipe will show? Drill pipe will show differential pressure between, formation pressure acting upwards, and mud hydrostatic pressure, in drill pipe acting downwards, that is 500 psi. Annulus side, hydrostatic pressure in annulus, acting downwards is, 5000 psi. Why it's less than drill string hydrostatic pressure? Because of influx, present in annulus, which is lighter than mud. Lighter fluid, will create less hydrostatic pressure than mud. How much casing pressure gauge will show? Casing gauge, will show differential pressure between, formation pressure, and hydrostatic pressure in annulus. Which will be 700 psi. As shown, the well is shut in, choke is closed, and pump is at 0 SPM. SIDPP is 500 PSI and SICP is 700 PSI. Why SICP is more than SIDP? Because of lighter influx present in annulus, which creates less hydrostatic pressure than drilling mud. In first cycle, we will circulate out influx. Once the influx gas is circulated out, what will be the reading on both gauges? At the time of shut-in SIDPP was 500 PSI, and SICP was 700 PSI. The difference was, due to lighter influx present in annulus. In first cycle, influx is circulated out. The hydrostatic pressure on both sides become equal. Drill string and, casing gauge will read same pressure, as 500 PSI. Basic Principle of Well Killing We should keep BHP constant, at least equal to formation pressure. Any well can be killed, using two thumb rules. Thumb rule number one. Whenever we touch pump control, either to start pump, stop pump, increase or decrease pump speed. We should keep casing pressure gauge constant to keep BHP constant. Thumb rule number two. If we are not touching pump control, then we should keep single fluid column constant to keep BHP constant. Let's start the first circulation. Since we will circulate the same drilling mud, so the lineup remains same. Step 1. Start pump in steps of 5 SPM till kill speed is achieved. By keeping constant casing pressure 700 PSI with help of choke. Applying thumb rule number 1. Pump at 5 SPM, keeping casing pressure 700 PSI constant. And drill pipe pressure increase to 590 PSI, due to circulating pressure adding up in drill string. Once the pressure is stabilized. Then increase pump speed to 10 SPM, by keeping casing pressure constant at 700 PSI. Drill pipe pressure increases to 650 PSI. Repeat the steps by increasing pump speed in steps of 5 SPM, keeping casing pressure 700 PSI constant. And drill pipe pressure will increase. Pump is at kill speed 30 SPM drill pipe reads 800 PSI. This is initial circulating pressure. ICP. Question. 
A kick is shut on a Surface BOP stack. Driller forgets to record, slow circulating pressure. What procedure should be used to find initial circulating pressure, ICP? Follow the startup procedure, start the pump by holding casing pressure constant. When pump reach selected kill speed, read drill pipe pressure gauge and use it as ICP. Now the pump running at kill speed. We should follow thumb rule number 2. Which says keep single fluid column constant to keep the HP constant. Thus, annulus has two fluids. Influx. And mud, whereas drill pipe has single fluid. And we are pumping the same fluid. Now until influx is circulated out. We will keep drill pipe pressure constant, equal to ICP. Single fluid column. Step 2. 100 strokes pumped keeping ICP constant in drill pipe, which has single fluid column. What will happen to casing pressure? Casing pressure increased due to influx expansion. 200 strokes pumped. Keeping drill pipe pressure constant, single fluid column, equal to ICP 800 PSI. Casing again increase. Due to influx expansion, 300 strokes pumped. ICP and drill pipe held constant at 800 PSI. Why casing pressure decrease? As the influx passed BHA, the height of influx decrease, causing increase in hydrostatic pressure in annulus, which caused back pressure in casing gauge to decrease. 500 strokes pumped, keeping drill pipe pressure constant, single fluid column, equal to, ICP 800 PSI. Casing pressure increase again. Due to influx expansion. Now keep pumping in annulus. By holding drill pipe pressure constant at 800 PSI. Casing pressure keeps on increasing. As influx rise up the annulus and expand. When gas is displaced to surface, by keeping single fluid column constant in drill pipe at 800 pounds per square inch, casing pressure increased to maximum 1000 psi. What will happen to casing pressure? When gas goes out the annulus, casing pressure now decrease to original SIDP, 500 psi. Let's check out why casing pressure decreased to 500 PSI. Since, influx is circulated out of the annulus. So the mud in the annulus is same as in drill pipe. Due to this hydrostatic pressure in annulus is equal to the drill pipe hydrostatic pressure. Now all the influx is removed out, first cycle is completed. It's time to stop pump. Step 3. Stop pump to zero, by holding casing pressure constant. As per thumb law number 1. Pump speed reduced to 25 by holding casing pressure constant. With the help of choke at 500 PSI. Drill pipe pressure decreases to 775 PSI. As circulating pressure decrease. Pump speed reduced to 20, by holding casing pressure constant. With the help of choke at 500 PSI. Drill pipe pressure reduces to 740 PSI, as circulating pressure decrease. Now, slowly reduce pump speed to zero. In steps of 5 SPM. Holding casing pressure constant. When pump is stopped. Drill pipe and casing pressure gauge will read, equal pressure to original shut and drill pipe pressure. 500 PSI. Let's check out both the gauges readings. Drill pipe pressure reads 500 PSI. Casing pressure also reads 500 PSI. Because both the column has equal hydrostatic pressure. Question 1. Suppose, 
after first circulation, if drill pipe and casing pressure gauge reads. SIDPP, 600 PSI. SICP, 600 PSI. What's the reason of both readings? The difference in reading is because of trapped pressure. That can verified by bleeding 50 PSI. If SIDPP and SICP decrease by 50 PSI, this confirms trapped pressure. This pressure can used as an overbalance or can be bleed off. Second question. After first circulation, if drill pipe pressure gauge reads 500 PSI and casing pressure gauge reads 600 PSI. What is the reason for difference in pressure gauge reading? Casing pressure is more, because of influx, still present in annulus. Third question. After driller method first circulation, if drill pipe pressure gauge reads 500 PSI, and casing pressure gauge reads 600 PSI, can driller method second cycle be used? Driller method second cycle can't be used, as per second cycle, while pumping kill mud in the drill pipe, we hold casing pressure constant but influx still present in the annulus, and annulus having two fluids. In this situation, if kill mud is ready, then we can continue with weight and weight method, or we need to repeat the driller method first cycle. Let's recap the driller method first cycle. Step 1. Start pump, to kill speed holding casing pressure constant, by opening choke. Drill pipe gauge reads 800 PSI. ICP. Step 2. Hold drill pipe pressure constant, equal to ICP 800 PSI. Because drill pipe has single fluid, applying thumb rule number 2. Keeping drill pipe pressure constant, at ICP, displace influx gas to the surface. And casing pressure will increase to maximum, when gas is at surface. After gas influx is removed from annulus. Pressure decrease, to original SIDP. Step 3. Stop pump in steps by holding casing pressure constant. Applying thumb rule, number 1. Record SICP, is equal to, SIDP. Let's understand how casing pressure changes during the first cycle. At the time of shut-in, EHP and drill string side is. Hydrostatic pressure in drill pipe 5200 PSI plus SIDP 500 PSI equals 5700 PSI. BHP balances to formation pressure 5700 PSI. BHP in casing side. Hydrostatic pressure in annulus is 5000 PSI plus SICP. 700 PSI equals 5,700 PSI, equal to formation pressure. When gas influx is at new position, let's say point, A. Hydrostatic pressure in annulus decrease by 200 PSI. Due to influx expansion, creating more pressure at the surface. Pressure acting downwards, in annulus side is, Hydrostatic pressure, 4,800 PSI, plus casing pressure, 900 PSI. So the total pressure acting downwards, is 5,700 PSI, thus, BHP in annulus, is again equal to, formation pressure. We can see, as the gas influx expands in the annulus, causing a reduction in hydrostatic pressure, which is equally balanced, by an increase in casing pressure, 
due to gas influx expansion. What we learned from this. Casing pressure increase, due to gas influx expansion. But pressure below, the gas remains constant. Thus, BHP remains constant. Pressure profile. For driller method first cycle. Throughout the first cycle, we keep drill pipe pressure equal to ICP. 800 PSI, single fluid column constant, and casing pressure first increases, due to influx expansion, when influx passes the BHA. Casing pressure decrease, due to the reduction in influx height. As influx is circulated up the annulus, casing pressure keeps on increasing, due to influx expansion. When influx is at surface casing pressure is maximum. As influx moves out of the annulus, casing pressure reduces and becomes equal to SIDP. When the pump is stopped, and well is shut in, both drill pipe pressure, and casing pressure, becomes equal to original SIDP, because, hydrostatic pressure in both the side is equal.